Thorn Whip is my favorite cantrip in D&D 5e. It's a melee spell attack with a 30 foot range, which is already cool and unique, available to druids, artificers, rangers with the druidic warrior fighting style, and nature clerics. Thorn Whip's damage die is only a d6, which is pretty low, but the reason it's dope is that you have the option to pull the target up to 10 feet closer to you if it's large or smaller. I'll cover all the cool things you can pull off with Thorn Whip, as well as some of its thornier rules. The number one best trick for Thorn Whip is to pull creatures into damaging terrain. The most easily replicable and strongest version of this is Spike Growth. On turn one, you cast Spike Growth centered on the creature that you want to damage. It has a 20 foot radius and creates difficult terrain, so any creature with under 40 feet of movement speed will have to dash to get out of there before your next turn. On turn two, you cast Thorn Whip to pull the creature back through the Spike Growth. They take 2d4 piercing damage for every five feet they move through the spell's area, including force movement. That means your spike growth now deals 1d6 plus 4d4 damage on hit. That nearly quadruples the damage that the cantrip does on its own. Plus, the target is now 10 feet into the spike growth again, meaning another slow walk out, during which they'll take another 4d4 damage. Using this trick on a creature with no ranged attack options is pretty much game over. There are many other versions of this. Any persistent spell effect that deals damage when the creature enters the area for the first time on a turn works brilliantly with Thorn Whip. Spells like Spirit Guardians, Moonbeam, Cloud of Daggers, and even Create Bonfire all come to mind. Plus, those spells all deal damage when a creature starts its turn in their area, so you're effectively triggering that damage twice. Once on your turn when you pull them into it, and then again when they start their turn there. This gets even crazier if you're a Swarm Keeper Ranger. With their Gathered Swarm feature, they can move a creature they hit with an attack up to 15 feet if the target fails a strength save. Combine this with Thorn Whip, and you get 25 feet of forced movement. Pull someone through Spike Growth, and that's 10d4 damage. 25 on average. Absolutely nuts. Another fun combo is the Nature Cleric. Honestly, I feel that people sleep on the Nature Cleric, and yeah, I get it. It's no Twilight or Peace Cleric, but I love playing one. Thorn whipping fools into my Spirit Guardians makes for such a fun and effective tanking playstyle that also deals really good damage. Anyway, this trick isn't just for spells. Use it with traps, fires, narrow chasms, or whatever terrain a creature would really rather not be pulled into. Tip number two for Thorn Whip is to protect your allies. One hidden benefit of Thorn Whip's forced movement is that affected creatures don't provoke opportunity attacks. This might seem like a weakness because it means you can't get away with the shenanigans you can pull off with dissonant whispers or command, but it actually adds great utility to the spell. If your ally is willing to take some piercing damage and you're able to spend an action attacking them, this can be a great way to get your buddy out of a particularly bad situation. Now, technically, you can't let an attack hit you if we're following strict rules as written, but I've seen DMs allow it, and I've allowed it myself. And I actually have a great story about this one. My party was crossing a bridge with lava on either side when a fire rock attacked us. Our NPC dwarf ally and guide was picked up by the rock and soon to be dipped into the lava below. The dwarf in the talons of the rock was 20 feet from us. So I readied an action on my nature cleric to Thorn Whip, triggering if he was ever within 10 feet of the bridge. My Sorkidan ally used Lightning Lure, which is another spell with a 10 foot pull on the dwarf. Both spells landed, and we managed to save our dwarf buddy from a gruesome fate. Although I did ruin my DM's joke in the process. He told us after the fight that he'd planned to yell, Do you smell what the rock is cooking? as we watched our dwarf get melted. On the more straightforward side, you can just use Thorn Whip to pull enemies out of opportunity attack range. This is the more traditional route to protect your friends without forcing them to eat damage or your DM to decide whether they'll allow attacks to auto hit. Simply pull an enemy toward you, allowing your buddy to walk away without taking an opportunity attack. As long as your ally goes before the enemy in the initiative order and there's only one enemy in melee range, this is a great way to help squishes in your group. But if you want to add damage rather than be a protector, you can also use Thorn Whip to pull an enemy up or down. If you are above an enemy, pulling them 10 feet in the air will cause them to take 1d6 fall damage and land prone. If your allies go before that creature in the initiative order, that's also attack advantage for melee attacks. Similarly, if the target is above you, pulling it down can cause an additional 1 to 3d6 fall damage depending on how high they are. My last tip is more of a reminder that Thorn Whip is a melee spell attack. This has a few interesting side effects. For starters, you don't have a attack disadvantage with Thorn Whip when an enemy is adjacent to you. It also means that it works with stuff like the mobile feet and Swashbuckler's fancy footwork. It also means that it works just fine to get double range with Smell Sniper, but it doesn't get the benefit of ignoring cover from the feet since that part requires a range attack. You can also knock someone out at range with Thorn Whip, since non-lethal damage requires a melee attack in 5e. I'm pretty sure this is the only way to knock someone out from 30 feet away, but do let me know in the comments if there are other ways to accomplish this. I know a bugbear giant barbarian with a reach weapon can melee from 25 feet away, but Thorn Whip still beats it out by 5 feet. 
There are a few other very niche interactions here, but just know that Thorn Whip does interact with anything that requires a melee attack. So yeah, Thorn Whip is a good spell. It offers reliable battlefield control that is undoubtedly useful, especially when used in conjunction with persistent zone damage. It's one of my favorite cantrips in 5e, but I'll admit I'm biased towards force movement effects. They encourage teamwork, creative thinking, and tactical gameplay. Anyway, do you guys have any good stories about using Thorn Whip in your own game or questions about the spell's rules? Let me know in the comments. This is D&D Lounge, wishing you all the best in your next spellcasting venture.